Greetings everyone and welcome to a very special video. We hit a big milestone. This is our 100th upload on Oxford comma. So for this video, I thought I would share five tips with you that I've learned about creating videos on the internet. And if you're not interested in creating videos on the internet, if you're interested in being a better writer or reader, which is what most people click on these videos for, I'm relating it to writing because there's a lot of overlap between making videos and writing essays. So stick around, we'll be talking about everything from monetization, like how much do you actually make making videos online, as well as why you shouldn't give up if it's the worst at first. So yeah, looking forward to it. See you in a second. Okay, tip number one is to edit, and I'm sure that seems obvious, right? If you're making videos, you're editing videos, but I don't mean the editing process, I mean the final edit, the proofread, so to speak. When it comes to making videos, just like when you're writing an essay, you need to catch your mistakes or others will catch them for you, at least most of the time. So what I've learned in making videos is that there are some very pedantic viewers out there who will correct me on anything I get wrong. And I'm gonna talk about how that's actually a blessing and how I actually really enjoy that in a future tip. But my gut instinct, as you can imagine, is to be kind of hurt and frustrated by that. You know, I spend a lot of time on these videos and I mess up this one thing or this two things or this 10 things, whatever it might be, and people nitpick at them. And it's very frustrating, but the fact remains that when I'm creating a video to teach someone something, it should be the best video possible. So the same thing applies when you're writing. You don't want to give your reader any barriers to understanding what you're trying to get across. And those little mistakes, those typos, those factual inaccuracies, those are all barriers. So I said that your audience will catch your mistakes most of the time. This is maybe a good time to point out that even if the audience doesn't catch the mistake, you have to live with it. Because whether it's a video that you upload on YouTube or an essay that you turn in for publication or even just to a professor, your name is on that piece of writing or video and it's not changeable. You don't go back and, and change a video from two years ago because you found a, a minor error. It's just gonna bug you forever. Case in point, I don't use this intro anymore. I use a slightly different one because for like 26 videos, the Oxford comma was in the wrong spot. And no one on the internet, thousands of viewers, no one on the internet caught it either. At least they were, maybe they were too kind to point it out to me. One of my students who was watching a video to review for something pointed it out to me. But man, that was embarrassing. So even if your audience doesn't catch it, chances are you might catch it eventually, and it's something you have to live with. So editing, super important. This segues really nicely into step two, which is keep the audience in mind. Like I said earlier, when I'm making a video to teach someone something, I should be presenting the best possible video to give them that instruction. That means taking extra time to make sure the video is high quality in terms of its audio or its editing. That means making sure that every fact I present or every opinion I present is backed up by research. And I'm not perfect. There's a lot of examples on this channel about how I'm not perfect, but I'll tell you one thing, my first draft is a whole lot less perfect than my final draft. And I think that's what you owe your audience member is taking the time to make something good for them. Likewise, when it comes to writing, a lot of really promising writers struggle because they seem to want to just prove how clever they are when they're writing their essay, as opposed to teaching their reader something or convincing their reader of something. You know how hard it is to change someone's mind? That's what most essays are doing. They're trying to get someone to change their mind. That's a near impossible task. Just look at politics if you want an example of how hard it is for people to change their mind, no matter what happens. So imagine trying to do that through writing or through a video. The only way to do that is to keep the audience in mind, that writers write for readers, not for themselves. It's okay to write for yourself, but that's a journal entry or a, a diary entry or some sort of therapeutic process. If you're writing for an audience, you need to keep the audience in mind. This segues into point number three when it comes to the audience is you have to find some sort of intrinsic reward when it comes to writing or creating videos because money cannot be your reward. This is how much my channel has made after a hundred uploads. It's not bad, 
but if you average out a hundred videos by that it's less than ten dollars a video and let me tell you some videos that take many 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 hours sure make a whole lot less than ten dollars so don't get into YouTube or into writing for the money. There is better ways to make money. But there might not be more fun ways because it's really incredible to get to communicate with this audience on a a day-to-day -day basis. And whether it be as a writer or as a video creator, that's the best part of it is getting to learn from your audience, to get that feedback, to get to have that in-depth intellectual conversation with people all around the world that you would never get a chance to meet face-to-face, -face, but they can read something you wrote or they can watch something that you created. I said earlier that it's actually a blessing when people pedantically point out my errors because some of these poems and poems, people like to point out that I don't pronounce both syllables in poems. Poem. Um, in the Midwest, we're a little lazy with our words. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so some of these poems and short stories and novels I've been teaching for over a half decade or in reading for over a decade. And I've learned new things about them. I've learned some of my erroneous presumptions about these works or things that I've overlooked or just theories that I'd never considered. And that's my favorite part is I've become a better teacher in real life because of this YouTube channel. And I always appreciate feedback. It's better when it's kind, but you know, I'm guilty of that too. Um, not always appearing the kindest uh, behind a keyboard. Um, and I think most feedback is meant to be kind. Maybe we just don't read it that way in our head because we're very self-critical. But I've really enjoyed getting to learn from this audience. And same thing with writing. I was a freelance writer for a long time. You don't make a lot of money, but the cool thing is you can edit someone's memoir. You can help someone create haikus about their baseball season. Uh, you can write articles for a, a nonprofit in Poland. It's just really awesome to create. And if you love creating, then create and don't worry if it's not going to make a lot of money. Everyone knows being an English major is not setting you on the path to become a billionaire. But I think there's so much more in life than just becoming rich. With that said, don't put too much stock into small beginnings. Point number four here, I've had some videos absolutely tank for like over a year and then suddenly blow up. One of my biggest videos on this entire channel is on Ozymandias. And this is just one example, but I have a lot of videos that have done this. If you look at my analytics for Ozymandias, for the first one year and 37 days, it barely got over two views a day. Actually, I don't even think that is two views a day. That's under two views a day. Not a math teacher. But then all of a sudden, without any change to the video, no new thumbnail, no anything, it just exploded. And it's done incredible, and I can't believe that almost 25,000 people have watched this video. And I have many, many videos that follow this similar curve, where they just sit seemingly forever, and then they do really well all of a sudden. Now, not every video does that, but I think when you get less than ideal results at the beginning as a, a video creator or a writer, um, it's very tempting to get discouraged. It's understandable to get discouraged. It's tempting to, to give up and think uh, maybe you're not any good at this and, and maybe you're not. But chances are, uh, with practice, you're going to get a lot better. And that's been my case as well. And sometimes you're just waiting for the audience to find that video or piece of writing. So again, don't put too much stock in a bad initial result. There are so many authors out there who their most famous novel nowadays was destroyed by critics when it came out. People are not a fan of The Great Gatsby, and now it is one of the most famous novels ever written, considered the great American novel. And initially, it didn't do too well. Go figure. And one incredibly significant factor in me continuing to make YouTube videos, even though it took a long time to get monetized, even though they didn't do very well at first, was that I found a mentor. And that is tip number five. Whether you are making videos or writing essays or doing anything in life, 
finding a good mentor is so essential. And the beautiful thing about YouTube is you can find a mentor who doesn't even know you exist. Um, <laughs> so it's better if your mentor does know you exist. You know, you find someone in your actual life. And I've had a lot of people who have been mentors to me in my life. But in YouTube specifically, my mentor is Sean Cannell. And I recommend him to anyone who is trying to create a YouTube channel. If you want to be like a teacher who makes YouTube videos that make a little bit of money, you can ask me some questions, but I'm not an expert. If you want to find an expert in making YouTube videos, check out Sean Cannell on Think Media, Video Influencers, Think Marketing. Seems like a great guy. I've watched a lot of his videos. He does have some classes, but you certainly don't need to spend any money to learn a lot from him. And I really think his heart uh, and passion are in the right place when it comes to this. So without him, I would not be on YouTube. I would just be six videos about Heart of Darkness made in 2015 floating around, occasionally being viewed. Shout out to anyone who's been with me since Heart of Darkness, the original Oxford comma. Ites. I don't know what we call ourselves. There's not really that many of you. It's okay. We don't need a name. But anyway, um, I would not have uploaded anything ever again but I saw one of his videos just randomly and kind of went down the rabbit hole and got encouraged and I had a child on the way and I was like I need to pay for diapers um and yeah great influence so find a mentor whether it be a professor a teacher someone in the profession or someone on YouTube who you know that uh you think is is doing what you want to do one day um and that is the best piece of advice I can give you so thank you so much for watching this. It was a little more self-indulgent than I like to be in my YouTube videos, but I thought 100 uploads deserved a little bit of celebrating. Uh, it does take a little while. So if you have any questions about creating videos on YouTube, I do it all very, very cheap with a lot of free programs. Uh, I have a decent microphone and um, $60 for Filmora, one-time payment, um, and that's all I spend on YouTube. Um, but I would like to continue to grow, and I think the next step for this channel is I'm going to be creating an online class that it should be up by the end of the summer. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be on academic writing. It's going to be at least 20 videos, plus a lot of other content covering everything to do with academic writing. So if you're looking for a very affordable way to hone in your writing, definitely check out that class. Otherwise, leave me some recommendations for what to create over the summer, and I will put that on my schedule. Have a great summer, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at video 101, hopefully soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one.